Hi folks, how do we make our parts faster? How do we improve our cam? Let's walk through some strategies, tips, and tricks. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So I was looking for a part for this video and I found an example in the cam samples scroll all the way down to 2D milling. Now I will admit, there's a couple really bad operations in here, like for instance, this 2D contour that takes up a ton of time. So it should be an easy one to find some low hanging fruit. The first thing I like to do, right click on the setup, machining time. Now you can adjust your feed scale, what are your machine rapids, what's a tool change time, but I'm less focused on the outcome, in this case the 30 minutes and 59 seconds, and much more interested in how do we change that. So just make sure you're being consistent. Uh, this doesn't always follow your computer, so if you're using Fusion from two different uh, computers, be careful to make sure you're doing apples to apples. So if we've got a 31 minute part, First thing I wanna know, what's taking up all the time? I've asked numerous times for an option that gives us a printout of all of these uh, machine times. The best thing they've got for now, it's not the easiest way to get here, is actually to create a setup sheet. So click setup sheet, click, pick a folder for it to go in, and this will actually open up in your web browser. Now it's not perfect, I see my total you know, time here, 31 minutes, what I can now do is scroll through each operation and look at the estimated cycle time. So a minute, 20, 345, 420, 17 minutes. Okay, and then 57 seconds, five seconds, six seconds. So good. I've quickly, very quickly, deduced that uh, the 2D Adaptive, the 2D Pocket, and the 2D Contour are taking a total 12%, 14%, that's 26 plus 57 to 73% of the time within just three of these ops. So obviously, that's where you've got the most potential to save time. Right click, duplicate. Now the point here is not to talk about fees and speeds and switching this over to a different machine that's got through spindle coolant and so forth, because anybody can do that. The point is more, what kind of workflow stuff can we change with the same tools in the same machine? First thing I'm gonna ask is, do you need to face it? Uh, Rob Lockwood taught me this, that sometimes, for instance, in this part, if we were going to do a horizontal later over this face right here, ditch the facing, you don't always need it. I'm gonna leave it in this example. 2D Adaptive, those do tend to take more time, but in this case, it's doing the majority of the material removal, and it wasn't that long, four minutes, so let's come back to that. Okay, first thing that jumps out to here, I don't like 2D Pocket, it's not an adaptive strategy, so it's going to increase the load as it comes into these corners. The other thing is spiraling tends to be slow, and in this case, why are we starting this high up? So if you were going to keep this at a minimum, go to your linking tabs, change your clearance height for this to like 0.01, 10 thou above, and go to my heights tab, and the top height should not be stock top. We've assumedly already machined that down with the facing op. So my top height is rather going to be model top. That should alone reduce a huge amount. See, that's probably still get it over here. But let's just compare these two. My old 2D pocket, 432. It may not be that much better. New one. Oh, 314, boom, there you go. That's a lot better. I still don't like it because in this case, I've helically through air right here. That's a terrible use of machine time. And Fusion can do better than that. So let's ditch the 2D pocket, delete 2D adaptive. Let's pick here. We'll keep the same tool that they were using here, which is tool three. Got that selected, click okay. See what we get. Oops, put in the wrong op. Let me activate our new one here. Okay, just gotta change the ramp in to be 10 thou above, and heights to be stock model top rather, sorry. Good, much better on the helical ramp for this one. Right click, duplicate, and we'll edit this one, delete that chain, and we'll pick this right here to handle that pocket. And that's great because it sees, hey, I can, I don't even have to heal again. I can enter from the side, which avoids any sort of a vertical uh, linking move into the part. That's a win. 
This 2D contour, I have no idea why this was done this way in the Fusion demo, but uh, there's no real reason why this couldn't be done in one pass. So I'm gonna uncheck multiple passes. Now I caught something which caught, which surprised me. There's a trick, uh, a lot of times when I'm walking around a face like this, I want the best surface finish on my sides and sometimes if you're just off a few tenths or even a thou in your tool height, you can end up creating a slot or trough along the floor, which looks really bad. So I was gonna offer the tip of in edit, passes, stock to leave, leave zero radial, but just leave a thou or, or, or even half a thou of axial stock. And when I did that, I remembered, ooh, let me take a look at how much the adaptive was leaving. And here we've got a problem. When we go into the adaptives, it's leaving about 20 thou radial, that's fine, but it's leaving 20 thou on the floor. This part was never finished, so that's a problem. You can change the axial stock to zero, and I'm often f fine doing that in an adaptive. Usually you get acceptable floor finishes. You don't want to do zero, zero radial because it will give you faceting as it rounds uh, arcs or circles. And I'll do the same thing here. So oh, I already had that zero axial. And zero axial, so now we're good. Much better. So we've already done the majority of our improvements and we've reduced this from 31 minutes down to 12 minutes, holy cow. Now granted again, that was a little bit of a cheap shot because of this bad uh, contour right here. There's one more thing that I really like, which is I'm a huge fan of drills. Click here for the card we did on a video showing just how good drills are, especially inexpensive drills at material removal, and they're reliable. So in this case, rather than bore this solid material out, which is gonna involve a really good expensive end mill boring into solid material, let's poke the drill through first. So I'm gonna drag this above my bore. I'm gonna change the height of it. Height, top height. Instead of being the top of the hole, I'm gonna say selection of this. Click OK. Now it's gonna get drilled first, so I'm still gonna bore this out, but instead of doing such a gentle pitch, I'm gonna go in a lot steeper. Passes, pitch, I may say 0.15. Click OK. Now, not a huge amount of time savings, but in my opinion, a much more reliable process. If we compare the bore for minute 14 versus now, 39 seconds. For, for production, that's a big deal. Uh, now we're drilling longer, so let's sum up the two of them. It's 104 to do both versus 138 to do both. And if you do happen to have a machine that's got through spindle coolant, you can drill holes really quickly. So folks, that's the majority of the improvements uh, that I find. I would love to see Fusion give us a better way of viewing a list of the individual machining times by operation other than having to create a setup sheet. But hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Take care. See you next Friday.